Hello and welcome aboard the City Sightseeing Tour of Llandidno and Conwy. Your ticket is valid for up to 24 hours and our buses run every 30 to 60 minutes. Please check with our driver for the times of the tours today and the time of the last complete tour. As we move off, take a look directly in front of the bus at the tall stone column with a gold sphere at the top. And as we approach it, you'll see that the top actually depicts a landmine with flames sprouting from its top. This is the town's cenotaph, or war memorial. It stands in the Prince Edward Square on the site of the Gosset Circle erected for the 1864 National Eisteddfod. Eisteddfod is a cultural festival where musicians, singers, poets meet in the spirit of friendly rivalry to decide who's the best and the members of the Gosset Circle uphold the Druidic traditions of the ancient bards of poets. George's Hotel here on the right. It was opened in 1854 and incorporated Wales's first water-powered elevator, or lift. Famous guests over the years have included Sir Winston Churchill, Otto von Bismarck, Napoleon III, Benjamin Disraeli, and William Gladstone. As we've travelled along the seafront, have you noticed the lack of garish and bright facades of these hotels? That's because the owners are required to use a pastel-coloured chart provided by the powerful Moston Estate when choosing a colour for the outside of the buildings. The Imperial Hotel on our right was once home to be cave of our friend, the Taxman. The headquarters of the government's Inland Revenue Department was based here during the Second World War in 1940. The Marine Hotel was home to the Queen Elizabeth of Romania 
five weeks in 1890, while she was here recuperating. And we'll hear more about her later in the tour. The large cream hotel coming up on our right was opened in 1860, but was taken over two years later by Dr. Henry Thomas, who used it as the Tram Digno Hydropathic Establishment, hence the name Hydro. Dr. Thomas offered a treatment called the Compressed Air Bath, and some of his medicines included belladonna, Spanish fly, and arsenic. On our right is the North Wales Theatre, venue Cymru, opened in 1994 by His Royal Highness Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales. It has one of the largest stages in the UK and has seating for 1,500 people. A new conference centre completes the project on this site. is good, you may see the many wind turbines out in the Irish Sea to your left. This is Gwyntamor, with 160 turbines 10 miles offshore. It is Wales's largest wind farm, with a capacity to generate 576 megawatts and power for 400,000 homes. And in the distance, you can see the little orb. It is 141 meters high and a popular sightseeing, walking and hiking sites. Just up ahead of us are the paddling pool and lifeboat station. The open space to the right is Bodavon Fields, home to Bodavon Farm Park, a free tourist attraction popular with families and people of all ages. We are now arriving at stop number two for Bodavon Farm Park. Please check with your brochure for the times of our buses. with a church. The Duke of Clarence died in 1892 at the age of just 28. Ahead of us on our left is Queen's Park, named after Queen Victoria. However, one road down to the left is called Romania Drive, named after another queen, Elizabeth of Romania, who stayed here for several weeks in 1890. She was a noted author of romantic novels and on a visit to the National Eisteddfod, she was honoured with acceptance into the Gosset of the Bards under her pen name, Carmen Silva. During her stay, she quickly grew to love the area and was always very complimentary about the standard of hospitality in Wales. 
Indeed, she was so fond of Wales, she actually learned some Welsh. When she left, she described Llandidno as a beautiful haven of peace. In Welsh, Har Havan He, and to this very day, that's our town's motto. Through the trees ahead of us to our left, you may see a glimpse of an impressive stone building. Blind Veterans is a national charity that supports blind ex-servicemen and women towards living an independent life. The building was originally known as Lady Forrester's, a convalescent home for the benefit of workers and their families from the iron industry based in Ironbridge in Shropshire.
you will see a spectacular view of Snowdonia. Snowdonia National Park has been a protected landscape for more than 50 years. As we come down the hill, you will catch a sight of Conwy, its castle and quayside, and the River Conwy Estuary. Coming up on our right is a pub called the Castle View, formerly called Maggie Murphy's. This name came from a song from the Boer War veterans that were once housed in this area. A copy of the song still hangs in the bar of the pub. Over to our right then, you can see the turrets and battlements of Conway's famous castle, which was built between 1283 and 1287, and commissioned by King Edward I, as it took control of North Wales from the indigenous Welsh. Edward built all of our beautiful castles along the North Wales coast, at Carnarvon, Harlech, Cricket, and Viewmaris. I'll tell you more about the castle as we approach it shortly. Llandidno Junction, where the main railway line from London Euston runs to Holyhead at the far side of the Isle of Anglesey. There, you can catch the ferry to Dublin, the gateway to the Emerald Isle. magnificent castle. Our first view is on the two eastern towers and between them the massive eastern barbican, one of the entrance to the fortress. Conway's story begins in 1283, the year that King Edward I completed the conquest of Snowdonia, ending the rule of the Welsh prince 15,000 pounds and it required the workforce of more than 15,000 masons and craftsmen from all over England to complete the project. In total, the castle has eight towers, originally roofed with shingle or slate. Once completed, the castle walls would have been limewashed or whitewashed, certain traces of which can still be seen on its walls today. What an incredible sight it must have been standing gleaming white at the base of the dramatic backdrop of the Snowdonia Mountains. 
Before we enter Conway, look to our right and slightly ahead and you'll see the town's keysight. At the end of the terrace of houses closest to us, you might spot a little red house. Or then again, you may not, for it is in fact the smallest house in Great Britain, just 72 inches wide and 122 inches high. peaceful enough, but slits or arrow loops in the walls could fire missiles down onto anyone attempting to storm the castle. Today, it's quite a different story, and visitors are now warmly welcomed. We are now approaching our stop for the town of Conway. This is where you leave us if you wish to explore the castle or the magnificent town walls, or maybe take a stroll along the quayside. Our buses leave from here every 60 minutes. Please check with our driver for the time of the buses that will take you back into Tadidna. If, however, you are leaving us here, I do hope that you've enjoyed the tour and I'd like to thank you for travelling with City Sightseeing. Welcome aboard the City Sightseeing Tour of Llandidno and Conway. Your bus ticket is valid for up to 24 hours and our buses operate every 30 to 60 minutes. Please check with our driver for the time of the last complete tour. Remember to hold on to your tickets as they will entitle you to a discount of your next City Sightseeing Tour. Please remain seated whilst the bus is moving and please also be careful of any overhanging trees. Conway Castle and the walled town of Conway were all built as one complete unit in the 13th century. Looking up to our left, we can see the town walls rising to their highest point and they constitute the finest and most completely preserved example left in Britain. Inside the walls, the town was laid out in a grid pattern with space for a town square or market square. It's ahead of the bus and it's known as Lancaster Square. Back in 
inside the town walls now in Berry Street, once called Burial Street, because here many of the victims of the plague of 1665 were buried. On the corner on the right is the white and grey stone building called Upper Conwin House, a magnificent example of a 16th century stone and timber frame building. It was originally built as a merchant's house, and part of it dates back to the 14th century. Ahead of the bus, we see once again the magnificent castle. You can just see some of the traces of the limestone wash on the walls. And as we leave Cumberland, look to the base of the castle walls, at the oblong holes. They were known as latrines, and there are no prizes for guessing what came out of there. Any invader wouldn't dare to attempt to climb up into the castle through those holes. <laughs> Look to our right at the two bridges. The furthest away from us is a tubular railway bridge, and the closest to us is Thomas Telford Road Bridge. Telford was a brilliant engineer and took great care in the building of this bridge by dipping the metal in linseed oil to preserve it. The bridge opened in 1826. The bridge beyond it carries the main railway line and it was the first of Robert Stevenson's tubular designs and opened in 1848. The modern bridge we've just passed over opened in 1958 to ease the increasing flow of traffic passing over Telford's Road Bridge. Increased traffic flow in the 60s caused dreadful problems in Conway, and so a scheme was devised to build a road tunnel under the estuary. As we cross over this next bridge, take a look down to the left, and you can see the vehicles disappearing into the tunnel. Construction of this massive project began in 1986, and it is made up of six reinforced concrete prefabricated units. A casting basin was created and the trench for the sections was excavated. The sections were then lowered slowly, one by one, then linked together. Finally, the trench was then filled in, bringing the riverbed back to its original level. It is Britain's first immersed tube tunnel, stretching for three quarter of a mile and designed to last for 120 years. It was opened by Her Majesty the Queen, who cut the yellow ribbon, and her car was the first to travel through it. during the Second World War was production of the Millbury Harbour. With the Allies planning the D-Day landings, military chiefs had to work out a way of getting all the necessary equipment from the naval vessels moored out at sea across very shallow beaches to the landing ground. It was decided that a floating harbour was needed to be built in sections and then floated across the channel and assembled on the French beaches. In great secrecy, suitable areas were chosen to build sections of the Melbury Harbour, and Conway was included. The area used is now the marina, and as a reminder, the local pub is called the Melbury. Many of the town's hotels and boarding houses were taken over by men working on this project, and in addition, the government billeted many evacuee children in Conway on the surrounding countryside at the beginning of the war. It was far safer for them here, in the countryside, rather than in large cities like Liverpool, Manchester or Birmingham. Roof and slate, quarry at Glendale Casino, further up the Conway Valley. 
In this century, the park has been transformed into a marina and a spa hotel called The Key after this history. This opened in 2006 and the houses in this area are very well sought after. Although Manas left structures here dated from at least 3000 BC, 
For the last hundred years or so, it's undoubtedly been the queen of the North Wales resorts, with many fascinating reminders of the elegance of the Victorian period. The name Shandidno, how did it come about? Sham is the Welsh name for church or parish. Tidno comes from the name of the 6th century monk Saint Tidno, who founded a church in the Great Hall, bringing Christianity to the area. There is still a church on that site dedicated to Saint Tidno. So basically, Sham Tidno means the parish of Tidno. Ahead of the bus is a close-up view of the Great Hall. It's 679 feet high, but there's no need to walk to the top if you don't want to. There are also trams to take you there. They began operating in 1902, and they work on the same funicular system used in San Francisco. In effect, the weight of the car traveling downwards pulls the other car up. Those original trams of 1902 are still in use today, over 110 years later. Mr. Charles Pepper. He came to fame as a designer of the Royal Air Force insignia. There was much conjecture at the time as to the identity of the bird represented on the badge. Many thought it was an eagle, but there was always some doubt. Some years later, Charles Pepper was to assure everyone that it was in fact modeled on a stuffed albatross from the National Museum. for the very Reverend Henry Liddell, Dean of Christ Church in Oxford. Liddell stayed here during college breaks with his family, his retinue of servants, and important and privileged guests. One of Liddell's daughters was called Alice, and this is the Alice on which Lewis Carroll based the famous character in Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. This is the West Shore, a stretch of golden sand overlooking Conway Bay. This is a popular spot for families, water sports enthusiasts, and especially walkers, as the Wales coastal path runs right along the shore. There is a boating lake, children's play area, cafe and toilet facilities for those wishing to alight here. As the bus turns, look down to the little island on our left. This is our bus stop for the west shore. If you are leaving us here, check with your driver for the time of later buses. The circular glass building here is another relic from Victorian times. It was built as a shelter and waiting room for the tram system that operated here between 1907 and 1956. The trams transported local townsfolk and holidaymakers around Fandidno, and they could even travel further afield too, as far east as Colwyn Bay. Much of the original tramway still exists, although modern streets have now largely covered them over.
family has dominated the life of the promenade for well over 100 years, and no holiday or even day out for Kandidno would be complete without a visit to Codman's Punch and Judy Show. Richard Codman arrived here in his horse-drawn gypsy caravan in 1864. During his stay, one of his horses died suddenly, leaving him and his family stranded. So Richard spent his time whittling driftwood from the beach and whilst doing this, had the idea of carving heads and doing a Punch and Judy show, something he had seen during his travels as a travelling musician. Actually, his shows drew complaints about the roxious and unruly noise during the performances. Commissioners banned them for a time, but the popularity of his shows overcame this and the shows went on to become a much loved part of the entertainment here on the promenade. And they are still very popular. Today, the Punch and Judy show is still here, complete with the original puppet heads carved from the driftwood that Richard Codman picked from the fall show in the 1860s. And remarkably, it's still operated by Richard Codman's descendants. On our right now, is the J.D. Weatherspoon Public House. It stands on the original site of the town's market hall. Later, it became the Palladium Theatre. And if you take a closer look at this splendidly restored and renovated building, you can see how it resembles the famous London Palladium. I do hope you have enjoyed your tour of Chantilpno and Conway. Thank you for joining us, and of course, many thanks to our driver. Remember to hold on to your tickets, as they will allow you a discount of any other sightseeing tour, either here in the UK or on any of our tours worldwide. If you are staying with us to continue the tour, we will be departing again very shortly. Deal Hanbauri Aun and Dewey's City Sightseeing. Ah, ponedi que sal. Questo che ne siamo. Ma sai, io 